Hi everyone and welcome to our really in-depth face chart tutorial. I'm starting off with some pressed powder and I'm taking that on a medium fluffy brush and I'm just starting off by buffing this powder right the way over the skin. Okay, being really gentle, I just want a nice abundance of it right the way over the skin. What this step is doing is it's creating a base before we go in with a more denser brush to add more product. It's just going to make your face chart and the base look really lovely and flawless and make it very blendable. So just keep buffing that right the way over the skin and then we're going to swap to a slightly smaller, more dense powder brush as you can see here. So now that I've already got a light base created using the larger fluffy brush, this is going to create a little bit more colour and a little bit more depth. So as you can see, in small circular motions, I'm just buffing the same powder right the way over the skin until we get a really nice, even coverage. Now make sure that you take time with this. It's important to understand that this is buildable. It's not going to happen straight away. So just keep going until you're happy with the coverage. And then taking a contour palette, I'm going to take um, just a nice warm uh, medium contour tone, um, which is matte. And I'm taking this on a fluffy eyeshadow brush, picking up a little bit of the product. And I'm going to start really lightly shading in the cheek. So I'm going to go from the top of the cheekbone and I'm angling that diagonally downward to meet the corner of the lip. And as you can see here, I'm just really taking my time doing small circular motions. And again, really important to remember that we just want to start by building up this color. So just a little bit at a time. Okay. And now I want you to focus on the pattern of my brush. You can see that I am using my brush almost horizontally to feather that powder back into the face. So as you can see right now on the left hand side, we're again angling the powder from the top of the cheekbone diagonally down towards the corner of the lip using a light soft pressure just going back and forth. So this is going to really place the product. Okay, so we're placing the product and then we want to focus on blending that product as you can see here. We're sort of almost blending horizontally so it blends back in and we're almost teasing it back into the rest of the skin. Okay, and as always a really light pressure and this is where you want to go slow and really, really build the product. Okay, the faster you go and the more abundance of product you have on your brush is going to mean that you're not going to have a really beautiful seamless blended base product okay and it's going to start to look really muddy so really important that you want to take your time okay really soft really gentle layers and now picking up more of my contour shade I'm just running that just up the edge through the temple and eventually going to bring that up towards the forehead and this is going to start our forehead contour and bronze And the same method, I'm just taking this along the jawline as well, just starting off with minimal product and then slowly building. So going right across the jaw, around the chin, and the same on the other side. And now to blending, I want you to focus on the direction of my brush. So you see that I'm teasing the product inward, again, getting that horizontal blend. Okay, And now I'm focusing much more on the forehead. So I'm just starting off by laying that product just on the edge of the hairline. And then I'm teasing the product horizontally outwards. Now, don't stress. I know it will look a little bit strange. Um, it looks a little bit messy right now, but it does all come together at the end. Okay, so just remembering that we're taking really, really small, soft amounts of product, okay, and then we're slowly blending over the skin, okay, really important to remember that this is a very buildable process, okay, so just going back and forth until you're happy with the depth. 
And then for a further, more seamless blend, I like to take the smaller, denser powder brush with the same face powder, and I buff that over each edge of the contour, and it's gonna create an even more seamless, really beautiful blend. So everything starts to look a little bit more cohesive. And now for blusher, I'm going to take just a mixture of a couple of different blushes and the brush that I'm applying it on here is this reasonably dense uh, pointed foundation brush. I think that this brush gives me quite a lot of control. So as always, making sure that I decant a lot of the product on the back of my hand. So I'm going in with minimal product. And as you can see for application, I'm starting with applying the blusher almost exactly where we place the contour. And then as you can see, I'm starting to tease it outwards. So we don't have an application of a bright pink blusher that's going straight on to clean skin on the face chart. So we're starting it off on top of the contour and then we're teasing it outwards to get that really lovely blend. And again, I can't stress this enough, we're going really softly um, in our application using light layers. And as you can see here, I'm just really softly blending. This is a process, okay? And the more you blend, the more softer your look is going to be. And I also like to take that a little bit over the nose area as well. So just keep blending until you're happy with your application. And the whole time I'm blending, I haven't picked up any more product. I'm just using the brush solely to blend. And I always like to take just a little bit of excess blusher along the chin, just for some really nice balance, as well as a little bit over the forehead as well. Okay, so now you can see I'm taking eyeshadow. I'm starting off with a nice light medium matte brown, um, but I'm gonna be working today with some different varieties of matte browns, as you can see there. So really important. The next step after my base is I take a pointed eyeshadow brush so I can be nice and precise. And I just place this through the socket. Now on almost all face charts, there will be a light to find line through the crease that you can follow. So with that nice light, medium to soft matte brown shade, I'm just taking this back and forth through the socket. And then this is actually a jewel ended brush. So I'm taking the lightly fluffier side of the brush and I'm just running that just over the top edge of my blend. You can pick up a little bit of the initial color that you used just to tease it out a little bit so you get a little bit of a softer blend. So as you can see, I'm just going back and forth. And this is really important um, why I go to the socket straight after I finish the majority of my base. And that is because this is gonna start your nose contour. So as you can see with my brush, with whatever's left, I start to drag that towards the nose and this is going to be the foundation for your nose contour. So I'm just replicating the exact same step. Okay, And as you can see, I'm starting to drag that really, really lightly downwards, which will lay the foundation and the base for your nose. So now beginning to create the shape of my nose, I've picked up the smallest amount of my lightest brown shadow and I'm just starting to really lightly draw vertical lines downwards of where the nose would naturally be. I'm just working my brush really, really lightly. As you can see, my placement of my hand on the handle of the brush is quite far away, so that means that my application is gonna be really light and soft. So this is quite a process. Um, it definitely takes a while, and you just wanna keep working slowly and in lots of different layers. And as you can see now, I'm creating two contour lines of the nose. So again, same principle. We're going down in a vertical line, really soft and I'm always trying to blend the top of my nose contour back into my eye socket. That's just going to make it look that much more natural and that much more seamless to the skin. Okay, so just keep applying and keep really lightly blending. Now I'm taking the pencil side to my brush and again with those same light tones, I'm just shading really lightly around the nostrils. Okay, this is going to give you really great depth and dimension to your nose. Okay, so going really lightly around the nose and then I also take a little bit down here as you can see to create some natural cupid lines. So just going vertically down 
and I always shade the top of the nostrils as well. So as you can see here, again with my more precise pencil brush, just shading the top of the nostrils. Again, it's going to give you dimension and depth. And then I like to create a little bubble underneath here. So doing a really soft semicircle. So just keep going back in with my fluffy brush. Um, and I also like to slightly tease my product outwards, okay, which you'll see in a sec. So you'll see that there's quite a theme to the blending of makeup. So as you can see right now, so I'm teasing it out. So we've applied downwards and to blend, I want to uh, blend the opposite way. So if we're applying our product vertically, um, I want to blend and tease out horizontally. And then back in with my small powder brush with my face powder to blend everything out so it's nice and cohesive. And that is the end of the first part of our tutorial. Welcome to part two. Now I'm taking a sheet of A4 paper and a brown sharp pencil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the A4 paper so it evenly meets the edges um, of the face chart. Okay, and then what I'm going to do with my pencil is I'm just going to pop a little mark where the brows start on the face chart. So as you can see, there's a really light brow already drawn in. And then I'm going to really gently pull the piece of paper down and I'm going to do a mark where the beginning of the eye starts. And then I'm going to do a little mark where the edge of the eyeball ends. And then I bring that piece of paper up and where I marked the beginning of the eye, I'm just going to draw a soft hair on the actual brow and then I'm going to pop a little dot where I did the edge of the iris and this is going to start to map out the brow. Okay, And just with my same brown pencil, I'm just starting to get a little bit of definition through the outer corner of the eye. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just taking some matte brown shadows on a really square brush. You can absolutely use an angle brush for this. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to start mapping out the brow. Okay, so the reason why I like to use a square brush or an angle brush is it's going to do a lot of the work for you. Okay, so as you can see, all I'm doing at this stage is I'm just drawing two straight lines. So the straight line beginning at the start of the brow where we marked it and then the arch of the brow where we also marked it. So just with my shadow and my angled brush I'm going back and forth to start to create some depth to the brow and keep going with this. It doesn't have to be too perfect uh, but this just starts to lay down the foundation of the brow and then once you're happy with the angles of the front of your brow, picking up a little bit more shadow, I just start to draw in the lower or the back of the brow. Okay, And this is where you'll decide on the shape of your brow if you want more straighter brows, which I personally like. Otherwise, you can do really angled brows. It's completely up to you. So again, just softly plotting in the back arch of the brow with the shadow. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just laying down the foundation of our brows. And then once you're happy with the template that you've created, I pick up a little bit of a darker brown shadow and I'm just going to color in the majority of the brow. Okay, I want to be careful not to put too much darkness right at the front of the brow, but I just want to basically color in the lines of the template that we've filled. Again, you don't have to to be super neat with this because we are going to create a lot of texture going forward. So once they are filled in to your liking, I'm going to take my pencil sharpener and my black pencil and make sure it's really, really sharp. And what I'm going to start to do now is I'm going to start to create some faux brow hairs. Okay, this is going to make the brow look really lovely and textured, but most of all, really realistic. So I'm starting from the bottom line of the brow that I've created and I'm doing really soft curved strokes. I don't want to have any straight vertical strokes because that's not really natural. What I really recommend is going on Google and Googling an image of an eyebrow and then really analyzing it and noticing how natural brow hairs sit and naturally lay. 
So I'm just keep going with my soft strokes and then I like to swap to a dark brown pencil, again making sure it's really, really nice and sharp. And again, I'm just going sort of in between where I haven't laid down uh, some lines just to get some really lovely and even uh, dimension. And I'm just going to keep going until I'm satisfied with the shape. And again, this is where um, your desired brow shape is really going to come into play. The more hairs you do, the more natural and fluffy and unruly your brow can be. So just keep going until you have created your desired brow shape. And then we're going to go in with a really fine black liner. So you'll see here, this is a really extremely fine ballpoint pen. And this is going to start to really give us some depth. And you just want to keep doing this really lightly right the way through the brow, making sure that you really take your time and don't rush with this. And then what I'm going to do is taking a deeper brown on the exact same angled brush that I'm using. I'm just going over the edges of the brow and this is going to start to make it look a little bit more fuller and a little bit more three-dimensional. So almost just filling in a brow how you normally would doing someone's makeup. So going right the way through the brow, but just ensuring that your placement through the front of the brow isn't too harsh. So keeping that reasonably soft. And then I like to go in with a lighter brown, really sharp pencil just to create some softer faux brow hairs through the front to get that really lovely natural ombre effect. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of a difference. So I just want to basically emulate exactly what I did on the right hand side on the left hand side. So starting with the pencil, going with the faux hairs and then going in with our pen and then sharpening it with our really defined black liner. And now I'm going to show you guys an amazing trick if you want really defined brows or if you need to clean them up. And that is going in with that same piece of blank paper. And I'm taking a really sharp dark brown. And what I'm going to do is I use this paper as a ruler and I'm going to create a really soft but really straight line underneath the brow and this is going to create some really beautiful definition. So again it just cleans up the brow and makes it look really lovely and defined. So again the same on the other side. So just using this as your ruler okay, and then doing a really soft fine line underneath the brow to sharpen it and to define it and then I'm going to take the pencil and I'm just going to run that across the rest of the brow. So there you go, you've got some beautiful, lovely, natural looking brows with dimension. And now we're going into eyeshadow. So I'm taking the exact same shade of eyeshadow that I used to put through the socket and I'm putting this through the outer corner. And this is just going to be my transition shade before I go in with anything darker. And I'm using the side of my brush just to create a little bit of shape. Uh, with the shadow, I'm doing a wing liner today, so I want to emulate my shadow in sort of an upwards, uh, an upwards direction, so it complements really well with the wing. Okay, and we're doing the exact same step as we would when we're doing a client's makeup. If we're doing uh, more of a nice classic eye, in we want to lay down a transition first. It means that when we go in with our darker shadow, it's going to be a lot easier to blend. So. Once we've laid down that transition shade and it's all lovely and blended, using the pencil side of my brush, I've picked up a lovely dark brown color, uh, which again is matte. And I'm first of all just going to start by just applying this exactly where I want the shadow to be concentrated, which is just in the outer corner of the eye. So I'm going to apply that product down and then I'm going to use the fluffier side of my brush to start to tease it out and to blend it out really beautifully and seamlessly back into the rest of the eyeshadow. So again, once I've applied that, I just want to swap to a nice fluffy brush and just softly blend that until you get a really lovely seamless blend. And you can always go in and pick up a little bit of your transition shade to buff over the edges so you get a really lovely seamless blend. And then on the pencil side of my brush, I'm just taking the original 
transition shade that we use, that lovely light brown. And I'm just buffing this quite smoky underneath the eye. So just going back and forth with my application and then replicating the same thing on the other eye. And then I'm gonna swap the side of my brush around to the slightly fluffier side. And I'm gonna pick up an even lighter tone, just really lightly. And I'm gonna use that to buff out the edge. So again, it's really lovely and seamless. And this is gonna create a really lovely, soft, smoky effect. And then last but not least, I'm going to pick up that same really lovely light shade and on the fluffy side of my brush, I'm going to apply that to the inner half of my eye to finish off the shadow look. And that is part two of our tutorial finished. So now for some gorgeous statement wing liner, I'm going in with a really sharp brown colored pencil. And what I'm doing here is I'm softly mapping out the waterline. So what I can do is I can go straight diagonally upwards to get a straight line for my wing. Okay, so it's exact same principle of when we get the right angle when we're doing a wing eyeliner on a client is we start from the lower lash line and we go directly and diagonally upwards and this is creating the shape of our wing. So I first like to map it out with a pencil really lightly and then going in with that same really lovely, really precise black pen and I'm just going to start mapping out the wing. So I like to start going at the base of the lash line first. This is a great way to judge your depth and I also taper that slightly in on the inner corner. I just think it's a really lovely look and create really lovely shape to the eye. And then because I've already laid the angle down with my pencil, it's a lot easier for me to go in with my pen. So now I'm just slowly working on building up the depth and the thickness and the shape. Okay, really take time with this. And you'll notice that I swapped pens and the pen that I'm using now is just a little bit of a thicker fine liner. So it's great for coloring in. But again, I like to mainly go in with my really fine pen because I find that I can be really nice and precise. But just keep going, keep building the shape. Slow and steady wins the race, guys, when it comes to eyeliner. So I just keep um, adding really light, uh, soft, gentle layers so I don't go all in and I've created something that's too big. And now you notice that I'm going in with a really sharp black pencil. And that's a great way of really seamlessly tapering out your eyeliner so you get a really nice seamless tapered edge. So again, I just go back and forth between my pencil and my pen on the inner and outer corner and I just keep going over the eyeliner until I'm happy with the shape and the depth and then of course just repeating the exact same step on the other eye. So following the shape and the angle of the wing that we created with the pencil um, and again using the pencil on the very inner and outer corner to be nice and precise and tapered and then going in between my two black pens and just slowly building up this liner until not only do you get your desired depth, but you get lovely balance in your shape. So just take your time and go nice and slow. And I find when doing eyeliner that soft, short strokes work best as opposed to doing one long swoop. So just start with soft, short strokes to build up that line. And then you'll notice that now I've finished my liner, I'm taking a really light brown eyeliner pencil and I just want to further define the line in my crease. This is going to give the eyes some really beautiful dimension. And it's just adding that another element of realness and three dimension to your look. So now our next step, really important, is I'm going in with my same angular brush and I'm taking a little bit of black eyeshadow and I'm running this, as you can see, underneath the bottom of the wing. 
so underneath the wing liner but on top of the eye and this is going to create a really natural shadow and then swapping to my black pencil again always very sharp I'm just going to start to map out the waterline to give some nice realism and definition and this is going to lay the foundation down for when we start doing our eyelashes But before we get to the eyelashes, I want to quickly fill in the iris of the eye and I'm going to do brown eyes today, taking a couple of different brown pencils along with a yellow pencil. Whatever eye colour I do, I always add a little bit of yellow. So I'm starting off with the perimeter of the eyeball, doing a little bit more of a darker brown, but it really is up to you. I think the less you think about it when colouring in the eyeball, the more natural it's going to look. So I just like to take um, a couple of different shades of brown and I just shade really sporadically around the iris until I'm happy with how it looks. But a great tip is popping a little bit of a yellow coloured pencil right in the centre of the iris. And now to begin the eyelashes, as you can see, I've got a really sharp pen and this is really important, guys. What I'm starting off is I'm going to start off with six foundation lashes. OK, so as you can see, I'm spreading them apart and I'm really lightly doing some soft C shapes. OK, so again, on both eyes doing soft C shapes and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building up the eyelashes around each of our foundation lash okay so doing two three or four lashes around our original foundation lashes and this is going to start to create some really lovely realism okay so again with the eyebrows I really recommend going on google and googling a picture of false eyelashes and naturally mimicking how lashes sit and bend um, you know we never want to have perfectly straight lashes because that's just not realistic because that's not how our lashes naturally sit so you want a really lovely curved eyelash okay you want them a little bit more curved outwards through the outer corner and then curved inwards through the inner corner of the eye okay and before I go in and add any really fine detail once I've done my black pencil I actually like to go in with a brown pencil as well again really sharp and it's just going to create another layer of dimension and realism to the eyes so once you're happy building up your depth and the shape of the lashes that you've created with your black pencil and again making sure you're going really slowly I'm going to work on the bottom lower lash line so again the same principle I want to start off with my foundation lash about five or six on the lower lash and I really want you to focus on the angle of the lashes so they go quite outwards through the outer corner um, and then quite inwards for the inner corner and always making sure that my strokes are really soft C's okay and then again to naturally build up the lash we're going to start localizing those foundation lashes and then we can slowly naturally fill the gaps in between using a black pencil and a brown pencil and then we're going to start to create some really nice definition and depth mimicking the lashes with our lovely fine liner pencil and of course we want to do this on top and on the bottom make sure that you really take your time with this and remember the more practice you have the more of different shapes of different false lashes that you can create but this is a really great way and a great foundation for you to get a really lovely natural fluffy eye look so just keep going until you're happy and then I'm just going to take a little bit of a soft brown eyeshadow on my same angular brush and just running that across the lower lash line um, a little bit in the waterline again it's just going to create uh, a little bit more dimension and almost a really soft liner but again it's adding that extra level of dimension and realism and then taking a light flesh toned colored pencil I'm filling in the very inner corner of the eye and then as you can see I'm also lightly dragging and then taking a light flesh toned colored pencil I'm filling in the very inner corner of the eye and then as you can see I'm also lightly dragging that or lightly shading that through the rest of the eye 
Welcome to part four. I'm going to go in now with an eraser and I'm going to really lightly use the eraser to create some really natural highlights. So everywhere where we will want to highlight the skin, I've already shown you guys how to use highlighter with a white out, but by using a rubber, um, it's going to create a really lovely natural highlighter. So as you can see, I've taken that right down at the nose on the tip of the nose. And now I'm just going really lightly at the highest point of the brow. So it's going to really open up the eye. And I'm also taking this on the inner corner of the eye as well to get a lovely natural highlight. And now an amazing trick. It looks a bit weird, but going in with a matte orange eyeshadow on the same brush that I use to apply the blusher. And I'm going to apply this over the top edges of the skin where the contour meets the skin. And an orange eyeshadow actually acts as not only a bronzer to the skin, but it adds a really lovely blended dimension. So it just creates this really phenomenal uh, natural blend and balance to the skin and it really does act like a natural bronzer. So as you can see, I am popping it over the forehead, over the cheeks um, and a little bit over the chin and now taking this intense pink eyeshadow to use as blush. Um, I want to lay it down first on the cheek, take a lot of the excess off on the back of my hand and now I'm just teasing that back into the rest of the makeup. Okay, so um, I generally like to finish off the face with another layer of blush. Um, again, we can always start with a little bit and add more. So I'm not picking up any more product. I'm just keeping diffusing that product back into the cheek until I'm really happy with how seamless my blend looks. So just keep working that until it's lovely and blended. And for a little bit of balance, I always like to add just a little bit on the chin. And then back in with my pressed powder and my small dense brush is I'm going to lay this powder a little bit over the areas where we haven't really got any product. So underneath the cheekbone and in the middle of the brows and in the center of the forehead. And not only is this going to lightly diffuse um, any strong harsh lines, but it sort of makes the skin look a little bit more like skin and takes off the harshness of the white or any paper coming through. And this is also just going to add to a final blend to the skin. Now moving on to lips, I'm going to do a nice matte nude brown. So I'm starting off with my angular square brush and I'm going around the edges of the lips to emulate a lip liner. So going right around the whole edge of the lip so we get a really lovely defined line. So on the top and on the bottom as well. And then I also take it in the middle of the lip. As you can see, there's a lightly defined sketched out line. So I want to make sure that I go over that as well. And then what I'm going to do is taking my pencil side of my brush, I'm just going to start diffusing that color. I want a nice ombre lip. So I just want to get a nice blend between the dark and the light. So that means going back in with our darker color and then blending that. So it's really nice and diffused. And then I'm going to pick up that medium peachy tone and I'm going to apply this down in the center of the lips with my fluffy brush until I get a really beautiful soft focus nude. And then lastly, I'm going in with a nice light brown, really sharp pencil, and I just wanna sharpen off the very outer corner and edges so I get a really lovely, crisp, clean lip. And another great trick for really lovely realistic lips is taking a grey lead is I'm doing some soft bent lines throughout the lip just to emulate some natural skin to the lip, some natural texture. And now I'm going in and creating some gloss highlight effects using my white out. So I like to start on the top of the lip. Um, and as you can see, I'm creating a soft light bubble on the top of the lip, which is going to emulate a really high shine gloss. And then as you can see there on the bottom, creating some really fine lines. Um, this is all going to make the lip look lovely and glossy. 
And now that the face chart is basically done, we're just going to go in and add some final touches. And the final touches really elevate our face chart. So again, going in with my eraser and I'm going to create a really natural highlight on the top of the cheekbone. So again, this is uh, in place of using a wire down. It's a lot softer. It looks a lot more diffused. And now what you're seeing is cross hatching. So I'm really lightly taking a light brown pencil and cross hatching diagonally. And this is going to create um, a really lovely natural skin like texture. And then lastly, using my wire out to create some lovely highlights to the iris. And that is it guys. So what I'm doing as you can see here is I am pulling off the tracing paper that I used. So before I started, I traced over the edges of the outlines of the face with tracing paper, cut the outline out, and then I stuck it to the edge using tape and this gives me a really clean finished product. If there is an any excess of a product you can go in with an eraser and then as always sign your name, your signature, it's your face chart and this is the finished look guys. So this is our really beautiful, I would say natural glam um, using a lot of techniques that are going to really amplify your skill from just an average face chart to a really extraordinary, very realistic face chart. I hope you girls learned lots of new tips and tricks and techniques to really amplify your face charts and take them to the next level. The biggest tip I can give you guys is just taking your time and adding small amounts of product and just building up. And especially with things like lashes and brows is Googling images and just emulating exactly what you see. So that's the end of the tutorial, guys. I really hope you like it. I hope you found it really useful. And at the end is just a really quick uh, video of the products that I've used. So the different uh, powders. Of course, you can opt nail polish as opposed to doing pencils uh, or shadows for the lips as well as a variety of the different tools I like to use, which include pens, pencils, and brushes. Thanks so much for watching.